Hello everyone, it's Luke here from 3D Tutor. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to create beach islands within Unreal Engine 5. So to get started, I'm currently using a basic level, which you can always get from upper left corner by clicking on File, New Level, and selecting Time of Day. This will give us a nice environment lighting with clouds implemented in them. In order to create water, we will need to enable some plugins. For that, we'll need to go to upper left section, edit tab, then select project plugins. So this icon over here. And within it, we'll need to find ourselves water. This bit over here. As well as we need to make sure that the landmass is enabled. So if we search for landmass, this also has to be enabled. Click yes. Then after you've done this, we're going to need to restart our Unreal Engine. Make sure you save the level. After it's done, it'll take some time to compile all the shaders, which we can see in the bottom right corner. When it gets finished, we're ready to go. So now we're going to start by creating a terrain. Right above our viewport, if we were to click on Activate Landscape Editing Mode, this button over here so within the terrain we need to make sure we enable the edit layer we need to make sure it's ticked on otherwise the islands won't be able to be created so afterwards i reckon i will also increase the number of components for my terrain just to make it larger instead of 8 by 8 i'll actually make it 32 by 32 just to get this large terrain for our ocean. Now let's hit create. Which will give us a nice plane to work with. So we're not going to be doing any editing within it just yet. We'll actually go back onto our editing mode by clicking on this button right above our viewport. After clicking it, we're now going to search for water. Will give us plenty of options but the one we're looking for is going to be called water body ocean so by simply clicking and holding it and dragging it onto our scene like so the first time you do it within the project it'll take some time to compile everything but by dragging this out we basically get multiple things uh, one of which is going to be a water mesh actor the other one is going to be a water body ocean. And finally, we're also getting a landscape water brush manager. When the shaders are finished, we get this nice ocean around the terrain. Not only does the ocean go extending by the limits of the terrain, it actually extends slightly outwards. As you can see, the terrain ends over here, but the ocean extends just a little bit further, which has been done in a way so that the horizon would extend just a little bit outside of the playable area. But anyway, now if you click on the water body ocean, you'll notice that we get these splines. And with these, we're able to adjust the way our island looks. By default, it's a square. We can always change the way the shape is. By simply controlling these splines, we're able to create the shape of an island the way we want it to. We can also add more spline points by simply right-clicking on our line and clicking Add Spline Point here. This way, we're able to get even more control over the shape of an island. Now, if you'd also like to control the slope of an island, you can do so by going into the water body, going within the terrain, curve settings. We can first of all change the way the edges behave, for example, by changing the curvature ramp. We can change the way our curve blends in with the water. I'll leave this at a default though. 
I'll leave this at the default 8000. For us to get into more detail for the curvature, we can edit the curvature flow that's itself. But for that, we'll first of all want to click on the browse icon, find ourselves the default, and we'll want to create a copy of this. So by simply clicking on duplicate, we'll be able to create a copy of it. Now we can call it load curvature custom one. And let's make sure we replace it on the side. So again, locate it within your details tab and simply drag and drop it into it like so. We had to do this in order to make sure we don't edit the default flow of curvature. Since this is a part of the Unreal Engine's own settings file, it would be affected in other projects as well. So we don't want that. Now that we have it changed, we can go into it and we get ourselves a nice curve to play with. Come out a little bit and this curve shows the way our fallout is behaving. So by changing it, for example, by adding a key to it, right clicking on it and adding a key, we can see the way it automatically changes. So we can, for example, make it smaller or larger, depending on the way we want it to be, which is quite nice. I will use this to make the fall off just a bit more natural looking. So with this key, I will click on it, right click on it, and set it as auto. Then I'll get it just a little bit inwards and maybe let it drag this outwards. So it would have like a nice slope from an island. And then it would deepen right away like so. This will give us the sort of result for an island, which I quite like. So now that we're done with it, we can go ahead and hit close. And now, once we're happy with the main island, and we want to create more islands, we're going to be using something called Water Body Island this time. Since this will give us a nice line, just like this one but without the water body. So let's go ahead and click and drag this into our scene like so. Let's get this out of the water right away. Going to get a three point spline shape. But what you'll notice is that the shape of this is just a hard edge. So to fix that, we're going to be changing the Curvature first. So by clicking on a name, we can go ahead and find a custom load curvature. Pick the one you created, and it'll give us the same curvature as the main island. But as you'll notice, it's not going to be the same since we actually need to have curvature ramp width be the same as our island. So if you go back onto an island by clicking on this icon over here and selecting the water body ocean from its details tab under the, under the terrain, you can simply click, right click and copy to copy the curvature settings. Then we can go back onto an island by clicking this icon over here. And right clicking on the curvature ramp width, we can paste in the value like so. This will give us the identical result. And a curvature, same as the main body. So now that we're done with this, we can, for example, adjust its island shape just a little bit more. I'll right click and add a spline to it as well. Get myself a shape that I like. Then afterwards, we can simply click on an island icon. And since it has the right settings that we like, 
we can duplicate it by clicking Ctrl and W. Then if we drag it outwards, you'll notice we have an island set up already. So with this, we can, for example, rotate it. So, and get ourselves an island the way we want it to be. Again, we can duplicate it and create the shape that we want. Control W to duplicate it. So yeah, after setting up the shapes of islands the way we want it to be, we can also add some additional terrain detail to them by going into the landscape editing mode. Before doing any change, we'll actually need to get a layer that we'll use to edit the terrain above the water layer. So we can simply drag and drop our previous default layer right above the water, like so. The reason we need to do it is because if the layer that we're editing on is underneath the water layer, that will mean that once we're actually trying to edit our shape, it won't be affected since the island splines override the settings. But if we have a look at it and drag the layer upwards, we can see that it does create the change. So now I'll just go ahead and right click here, clear all, click yes, and reset it to our default state. So now with the layer being on the top, I'll just simply create some additional details to the island, clicking on a noise, getting myself a larger brush, and I'll actually lower the strength as well to it, setting it to a value of 0 0.1. Now by doing quick taps, I'll be able to create a nice minimalistic detail for the islands. I'll actually even get the larger brush by manually overriding the value, set it to 10,000. And get some detail in like this. Now if you think this is too much, we can always lower the alpha value. Or this layer, if I set it to, for example, 0 0.3, I'll get this sort of result. Also, another thing worth noting is if you happen to be changing the splines for the islands again after doing some edits, what you'll notice is go back to editing mode. What you'll notice is that because the layers are kept separately, what we did to edit the island is actually going to be kept underwater. I'll just turn on alpha real quick to show it. So all this bit that we tried to add it onto the island is actually going to be kept underwater as well. So while working, just keep that in mind. You can also always go ahead and use the eraser height data to simply delete all the unnecessary values like so. so if there's any value that you don't like or any changes that you did to the island you can always revert it like that click ctrl z to undo my steps to the point where i had alpha of 0.3 I'll actually even lower the value even more, 0.1. So I just want the minimalistic changes within an island. And if you feel like island is being covered up too much, you can always go back onto our islands, going back into the selection mode, selecting all the water body islands like so, and just bring them up outwards. I'll now add a quick material for the sand. And that's it guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other free to goods such as online courses, 3D assets and PBR textures. All the links can be found in the description down below. Thanks for watching.